All right, so let's get into the actual animation. So we need, we've got our scene here. We need to do a little bit of setup so we've got the most kind of optimal workspace here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the workspace from Maya Classic to animation. Okay. And uh, this is the view. If you just have a single view, tap space, you'll get a quad view. And then we've got the graph editor down at the bottom, which we will deal with, but not immediately. Um, for this quad view, we're gonna, we just want two. We don't need all four. So I'm going to grab this dotted line here and just drag it down. So I've only got two spaces. And then I'm going to keep this perspective. And then this side view will be great, but I will hit five to uh, see the shaded view. Uh, so that's about all I need here. Oh, I don't see any of my control bones here in the side view. So I'm going to go to show and NURBS curves. And now I can see my control bones. Um, so if you can't see them, that's where you go. And then we, what we need to do is open up our animation preferences. And the shortcut for that is down in this corner. It's the man running away from the giant gear. Animation preferences. Uh, we want to be 24 frames a second. We want playback speed to be 24 times 1. Okay, It might default to play every frame, but we want 24 frames per second times 1. Update view. I'm going to select all so that when we play back, both views play, because sometimes that can be annoying. Uh, continuous looping. Oh, uh, and then up at the top here, playback start and end. We want to start on frame 1. We're going to end on frame 25. Animation start on 1. Um, and that can go to 25 as well. That's fine. And we'll click Save. And now we're set up for this walk cycle. I Last thing before we start moving stuff around, I'm going to break my outliner off screen so I can save some screen real estate. Um, I'm going to keep the graph editor fairly minimized for now until we need it. Um, we have, just to point this out, we have uh, one layer set, and that is the actual objects, the mesh, and it's set to a reference layer so that I can't select that mesh, even if I click and drag across which is great, so don't, don't accidentally select it when I'm trying to select a bone to animate. Uh, if you do need to select a layer for whatever reason, click that R so that goes away, and now you can select the object. Um, but we're going to keep that on reference because we don't need to select the object. We're only worried about the animation. All right, last thing. Then we'll start doing stuff, I promise. And that is this auto keyframe toggle. We're going to turn that on. Automatic keyframes. So anytime you move something, a keyframe will be set. However, there's a caveat, and that is you have to set a keyframe first. So an object needs or a property needs to be keyframed once, and then it will know from there on any changes to that. It will also set a keyframe automatically. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We got that on, so you should see that highlighted in red. And we are ready to animate this walk cycle. Now, I have provided you with some scans from uh, Animator's Survival Toolkit. And, you know, if you do a search for walk cycle or walk cycle breakdown, this image right here is what you're going to see. Um, everybody refers to it. It is, you know, one of the kind of seminal works of walk cycle educational material out there. Um, because it breaks down the walk cycle into a pretty manageable thing. Like if I just told you, animate a walk, go and you had no frame of reference, it would, you know, could very potentially be an overwhelming thing if you've never done it before. Um, this helps kind of clear that up in a way that makes sense. Um, we're going to be animating in a pose-to-pose -pose animation style in that we're setting key poses, and then Maya's going to kind of take care of the rest, and we can modify that as we go. The alternative would be a, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's kind of a straight through um, animation where you animate frame one, and then you go to frame two and you animate that. It's more common in hand-drawn animation than 3D, um, but that is kind of the alternative to pose-to-pose -pose animation. So, this is what we're going to concern ourselves with, is just these key poses. We have a contact pose, a down, a passing position, an up, and then a contact for the opposite leg. So really, it's only four poses that we need to worry about, and then we copy them to the other side. Uh, 
So let's get started. Let's start with the contact pose, which is this first one right here. Okay. So if we kind of take a moment to analyze our reference, and you know, for this we're using drawings, but you can certainly use video, and it's often encouraged when you're doing kind of more proper, you know, finished product style animation. You're going to have reference video of some sort. It just helps make things realistic. Um, you know, and you, can, you want to pay attention to that, not just see the kind of the general characteristics, but really pay attention to the individual parts. So we've got in this contact pose, we have the front leg is straight and the toes are up. The back leg is a little bit bent and just the, the ball of the foot and the toes are on the ground. You see the character is leaning forward a little bit. Um, we can also look at you know, this reference and we can see that in the contact where he's leaning a little bit to one side. If you want to think about, you know, you need to think about how that character would actually stand and where that weight distribution would be. Um, you know, if, if it doesn't look like they could stand up, then they probably couldn't. You want to make sure that weight is centered. And that's how you get this kind of counterbalance of like hips are going one way, the shoulders are going the other to, to kind of counterbalance that. Um, there's a lot to keep in mind. And, uh, you know, just the more you do it, the more it'll kind of come naturally. But contact pose is what we're going to do. So let's start. Uh, we'll start with just the, uh, the main control here. And we're going to move it down a little bit so we give the legs some room to, to spread out. We're also going to move it forward, okay, because you're going to be leaning into this walk. Uh, then we can also rotate this a little bit. So we'll rotate it forward, so leaning into, again, that sense of um, forward motion. And this right leg is going to be forward. So I'm also going to kind of rotate that so that right leg favors going forward a little bit. Um, you can also see if we look at this reference, this contact pose, uh, the side where the, the, the foot is forward is down a little bit, right? So we're going to just tilt that down just a smidge. Okay, it's a subtle thing. All right, so we've got that. Uh, now let's grab the right leg and see the right leg is extended and up. So I'm going to, whoops, not that, W's, because we just want to move it. I'm just going to drag it along the ground so it's extended. And then I'm going to grab uh, the foot roll. I'm right, just going to highlight that and then middle click and drag in the viewport. And I can bring that up a little bit. Yeah, something like that, maybe. And then um, you see that knee bench, so we can bring that foot forward even further. Now, if you're worried a little bit about the the knee uh, kind of end up going backwards if it's getting too close, is we can select just both of those knees and just move them forward a little bit so that the knees don't accidentally reverse uh, through the walk cycle. Just give it a little bit more space. So we've got that front leg figured out. Um, now let's grab the back leg, and that back leg is, we've got a little bit of a bend in the knee, and that just that toe is on the ground, so we can go, and I'll drag that back leg back, okay, just until it's straight, and then I'll grab the foot roll and the foot brake, bend that up, and we can go pretty far here. Something like that, I think. And you can see now, with that, how bent that is, we can move this back even further. I want to still want to keep some bend in the leg. Something like that. Um, so that's pretty good for the side view. Uh, but again, this is a 3D object, and this is not going to be our final view. We want to be able to this to look good from all sides. So let's look at it in, we can either go in perspective, we can also change this to the front view. So I can either go panels, orthographic, front, or hold down the space bar, hold down the right mouse button, and we can choose front view from this radial menu. Okay, hit A to frame up everything so we can see it. 
Uh, and you can see the front is actually looking uh, at the back side of the character. So let's space, right click, and we'll go to back view and hit A, and now we can see the front of it. Um, so what I want to do for uh, here is I don't want just the, the character to be kind of walking with legs straight out. Um, is I want to kind of think about balance and, you know, you see how these legs kind of come in. I want to do some of that sort of thing uh, for this character. So I'm going to grab the feet, and I'm going to bring them in a little bit. How far you go is kind of up to you, really. Grab the left foot. I'll bring that in a little bit. Um, I'm also going to bring... Let me think about this. I think we're probably pretty good right there. Oh, you know, there is one other thing that I want to do. With the feet, I'm going to grab heel twist. I'm just going to twist it out just a little bit. Uh, 11.5, I guess, is what I'm going to go with. Doesn't The specific number isn't super important. Whoops. And same thing here. Somewhere around there. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Okay, it's just it's more realistic if it isn't really. Um, but I'll go, I don't know, we'll say 13. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of additional kind of personality going on there. We can double check this in the, in the side view, make sure we're still looking pretty good. Great. Uh, so I'm going to call that good for the contact position of the first one. So I'm going to go to frame one, and I'm going to left click and drag across everything to select all of the bones, all of the control bones. Uh, and I'm going to hit S to set a key for everything. And you'll see the channel box. Everything will turn right here. We've got a red line down on the timeline. Uh, we have a keyframe set. Congratulations, you've started animating. This is a walk cycle, which means it's going to repeat itself. Um, we're doing, we're animating this on 12s, so it's going to be two steps a second. We've got this set up for just over a second. Um, and the way it's going to work is we need to start and end at the same time so that it cycles cleanly. So we're going to go to the last frame, and I'm going to hit S again with everything still selected. Okay, so now I have a keyframe set, the beginning and the end. I can hover over the graph editor and hit A to kind of frame everything up. You see everything's a straight line because I've set two keyframes. They're identical. There is no change over these 25 frames. Okay. So now... Uh, on this walk cycle, and the halfway through it, which 12 frames later is going to be frame 13, because 1 plus 12 is 13. That is math. Uh, this needs to be opposite, because this foot will have gone forward, this foot will have gone back, the left foot will have gone forward, and it should be in kind of the mirrored position. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, <clears throat> let's going to hit S to set another keyframe here on this frame for everything. Uh, but because this needs to be mirrored, we need to do that. And let's start with this, the, the main control bone. I'm going to minimize the graph editor for now. So this main control bone, um, we need it to be leaning the opposite way. Okay, We still want it to lean forward. Okay, and you see the forward axis leaning is, is around the X, so we want to leave that alone. Um, you can even test that if you highlight the X axis. You can see that's we want to keep that lean consistent. So I'm going to not adjust that, but I'm just going to invert the Y and the Z. So the Y is going to go from 11.41 to negative 11.41, and the rotate Z is going to go to, from negative 4 to positive 4. That's it. Okay, so now that has been mirrored. Now you can see the feet are off the ground here, and so that's the next thing that we need to fix. Um, and we can copy and paste keyframes. And you can copy keyframes from one bone and paste them onto a separate bone. So we're going to go to frame one, and this is the foot that's forward. 
I'm going to right click on the timeline and go to copy. Okay. Then I'm going to go to frame 13, go to the opposite bone because this foot needs to be forward now. Right click and paste right there. And now that foot bounces forward. Do the same thing with the opposite uh, foot. Uh, so I've got this, we're going to go back to frame one with this left foot still selected. Right click, copy, go to frame 13, select the opposite foot, right click, paste. There we go. Um, and now we can kind of, we can see <clears throat> um, we're mostly there. I mean, we can hit we can hit play. Um, Alt V is the shortcut for playback, and that's what we have so far. So obviously, there's still some work to do, but we've got motion. Uh, the one issue that I have is if we look at the rotation of these feet, when when they're in the back, they kind of rotate in, right? So I'm just going to. Uh, not worry about them. Because what we're going to do at the end is when we go through and clean up this animation, that rotation is going to stay the same. So what I'm going to do is just delete the, all the keyframes except for the first one, and we'll just set a constant. Um, no reason to go through and change it every time we set a keyframe. That's too much work. Let's work smarter, not harder. Um, but, yeah, we hit uh, Alt-V or hit the play button down here, and now we've got an animation that it's kind of weird because if you you can make your mind think he's either walking forward or backward depending on just yeah just how you think about it um, because it is so even but now we can move on to the next pose and the next pose is going to be this passing position this middle pose all right we can also look at our kind of timing reference here um, and we're going to do this this first uh, breakdown is what we're going to use. And the passing position is going to happen on frame 7. So, we, let's take a, a second to look at our reference here. You see that lean forward is still there. Uh, it's up a little bit higher than the contact. You see the head height is a little bit higher. The right leg is straight down. The left leg is bent. Okay, but the foot is generally straight. We can look at the front and back view and kind of see now we've got a little bit more lean here right so you got the, the hip leaning over the foot that is on the ground um, kind of get that counterbalance sort of thing going on so let's do that I'm gonna go to frame 7 you can see that this is obviously not where we want to be okay, have this pose so I'm going to grab the right foot, and we're going to clear the roll, clear the break, set those both to zero. Um, we do need to raise up the head just a little bit. It doesn't don't want to go too far, because if we look at our, our reference, you can see that the up is still there. So we want to you know, make sure we leave room for this to go further. But up a little bit. And we can move this right foot back a little bit because we do have that kind of angle. And so it's just straight. We don't want to go too far where that foot lifts off the ground. Okay. It's kind of there. Something like that I think will work. And then we can grab left foot and this we need to lift up off the ground I'm going to set the foot break to zero the foot roll we're going to bring all the way up to like 90 and then oops, move that back a little bit Okay, we kind of want it like over there. Uh, 
we can maybe even go, I guess we can't go further on the roll. Oops, 90. We can adjust that break even more. You know, maybe we want to give a little bit of an arch to it. We can also maybe adjust that rotation a little bit too. Uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, let's go to the main body. And again, the front kind of rotation is good, but with this passing position, let me actually go into the proper, we'll go to the back view so we can kind of see this straight on. Um, I want to kind of continuously scrub through and make sure you're checking the range of motion here. Uh, we want to grab and kind of bring the weight over the foot that's down. And have the hips kind of lean over that a little bit more. Also, you can see that, that the foot is, I brought it into the center here on frame one and then it's moving back out. So I want to kind of correct that. So I'm going to grab this uh, right foot, set, check my tra translate X, and I'm just going to copy that and paste that onto frame 7, and actually on frame 13 as well, okay, just so that that's a consistent thing. And then I can kind of check I think that's going to work. That lean seems really extreme, though, in the center there. Here is actually because that uh, that heel twist. So I guess we do need to kind of set that heel twist again. So I'll just. Copy that and paste that onto 7 and 13. I just make sure that's consistent. Cool. That works for that foot. We'll do the same thing for the other foot. I'm going to grab that backbone. Let's make sure the heel twist is consistent. So copy that value from frame 1 and paste that onto 7 and 13. Cool. Then we also need to set that uh, translate x value, make sure that's consistent across all of them. You know, you could do this after in the uh, graph editor, but do it here so it looks clean as we go. All right. So that's feeling pretty good. You know, one thing you could do with this passing position is, and he's got pretty skinny legs, but sometimes on, on walks uh, in the passing position, this foot that's off the ground will like swing outside, swing wide a little bit. So you could even take this and move it a little bit outside. So it's got a bit of an arc to it, something like that. Okay, I think that looks actually pretty good. Um, we can look at, double check this hip hip tilt. So I'll grab this, and we can look at how the rotation changes. We go from 11 to 8 to 4. Oh, it's not the one that I wanted. Z. Okay, maybe we'll accentuate that just a little bit more. Well, no, I'll keep it the same. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down to the minutiae right now. We should really just be focusing on the on the high points. Uh, okay, so I've got that pose that we'll double check it again from the side. Make sure it's still looking good there. You can see now that leg isn't quite as straight, so I'll move that center up a little bit more to make sure we've got the right position there. Okay. We'll bring this foot up a little bit more still. Okay. So there is my 
uh, passing position. And again, we're taking two steps. So I'm going to select all of the bones. And I want to hit S to make sure I set keyframes for everything. And then we're going to go forward to frame uh, 19. All right, because that's you know halfway between 13 and 25, so it's six frames, 19. Uh, and we want to uh, copy that. So really, we're only animating three bones, right? Or it's the two feet and the, the center. So we'll start with the center. We'll go from frame seven, right click and copy that data. And then go to frame 19, and we're going to paste. And then again, we need to reverse the rotate Y and the Z so that he's leaning the correct way. So that's going to go positive, and this is going to go positive. OK. And then we'll grab the foot. So we'll grab the right foot, copy the data, go to frame 19, select the left foot, the opposite foot, and paste. OK. But we do need to adjust that heel twist. So again, that should be 13. And the position uh, needs to be, uh, what was it? The position should be negative 255. We'll paste that. And then remember, we, we brought this foot. Actually, that's the ground foot, so that's going to stay there. Um, Back to frame seven, we'll grab this left foot, right click, copy. Go to frame 19, select the right foot, the opposite foot. Paste, paste. OK. And then remember, we need to double check our translate values. Do that. And then this should be negative 11.5. And then remember, we wanted to have it kind of swing out a little bit uh, on the passing position. Oh, that was the other thing that I uh, didn't adjust, is we want the X position of the hips. Remember, because we leaned over the, the leg that was down uh, on frame 7 uh, with the right foot down. So now with the left foot down, we need to lean over to the other side. So I'll set that translate X to negative go and we'll take a look see how we're doing we can kind of compare in the side view if we jump between 7 and 19 they should look just about identical and it actually looks pretty good the second uh, passing position copied let's go ahead and hit alt V to play it back our animation and now we can see we're kind of getting somewhere. All right, we can orbit around in this view, and we can kind of see how the foot is going. Um, I do want to check. We'll go from the back view so I can see the front of the character. Um, I want to make sure that this right foot is swinging wide, and it's not. So I want to go to frame 19 and just bring that out wide just a little bit, because I like that additional kind of swing around and back in. I think that's nice. OK, cool. So we've got that. Um, we can move on to the next pose. And that is going to be uh, this down pose. So we can check our kind of timing reference. And that's going to be on frame 4. Um, and then also on frame 16. But we're just going to worry about frame 4. And we've got this is the lowest point, you know, as indicated by the, the name down pose. It's the lowest point. The front foot is flat on the ground and the knee is bent. The back leg is extended out pretty far, but still bent. And the toe is the only thing on the ground. Um, there's a little bit more hip rotation happening as well. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's figure that out. Go to frame four. And I'm going to go back to my right side view here. See, this isn't quite what we're looking for. Again, we can kind of compare this blue figure with what we've got. And 
All right. So we're going to start with um, start with the the main control bone because I want to see here on the down pose. We've got the hips most extremely leaning towards the down foot. So we're going to do that first. Uh, I'm going to bring the character kind of back to center. Well, maybe not that much, just a little bit. Um, but we will rotate it down just a little bit more. Then I'm going to grab this right foot, this forward foot, set that foot roll to zero so that's flat on the ground. Uh, we do also need to bring the whole center mass down. And here it's a good idea to scrub through your timeline so you know where this was on the contact uh, pose because we need to be lower than that. Okay, so uh, you can kind of compare back and forth. Another thing that you can do to help kind of focus on just the keyframes that you're working on is if you right click on the timeline and we have this enable stepped preview. That's like setting all of your graph editor to constant. We click on that, and now when we play back, it just goes through the frames that have keys. Okay, so you can just worry about those poses, which can be helpful sometimes. Um, I'll leave that off for now, but <clears throat> just want you to be aware of, of that tool as well. There's also like if we go to the animation menu, there's onion skinning and things, but um, again, not going to worry about that right now. Um, but just scrubbing back and forth and make sure that we are, in fact, going lower on the down pose. And let me find my reference again. There it is. Okay, so I want to bring this foot forward just a little bit. Something like that. Uh, this back foot, I want to bring it back to the ground, so I'm going to set the translate Y to zero. And... We're going to set the foot break to zero, and we can move this back some more, kind of something like that. Uh, I'm going to increase the foot roll some more. And maybe we will bring it back a little bit more. Um, maybe we'll play around too as we can kind of rotate the hips forward a little bit more if we want. Okay, I think that's going to work. I like that. Now we can jump to the opposite side. So we're going to hit S to oh, select everything. Uh, hit S to make sure you've got a keyframe for it. Then we can jump over to frame 16, and, oops, uh, yeah, so we'll grab the, the control first, frame 4, copy, frame 16, paste, and there's a couple things that we need to reverse. We want to reverse the translate so he's leaning over the other leg, and then we're going to reverse the rotate Y and the rotate Z. Okay, so now that's in position. Now we can worry about the legs, so we'll start with the right leg. Frame 4, copy. Frame 16, select the opposite. And uh, paste. Okay, but again, we need to set the heel twist. That needs to be 13. And the uh, the translate on that foot, we want it to be constant, so we're going to copy that from frame 13 and paste it there. Okay, that looks good. Now we can go back to frame 4, copy the left, and jump back forward, select the other foot, and paste paste, and again adjust that heel twist, and 
adjust the X translate I think we're good so we can compare frame 4 and the side view to frame 16 you can see they look the same and let's hit alt V again and see how we're doing okay looking pretty good it's kind of a lumbering walk all right, but I like it. So now there's just one more pose to go, and that's going to be the up pose. This in a in a pretty good place. Let me turn my handles back on, and see. So this is where we're at. Um, so the last pose that we need to take care of is the up, and if we can refer back to our reference. You can see he's up on a toe. The other foot is off the ground, still leaning forward. Uh, if we can look at kind of the the backside view, um, the hips kind of go the opposite way a little bit, uh, but it is a little bit flatter. So let's let's dive into the up. So the up is going to be oh the just the timing. Uh, is going to be on 10 and then also on frame 22. Those are going to be our key frames there. So let me set this back to 25 as well. All right. So we're going to go to frame 10 right here. And, you know, we're naturally actually pretty close, but uh, we can get closer. So uh, we know this needs to be the highest part, highest point in the cycle. So we'll go to the passing um, or the, the contact. Actually, we should refer to the passing pose because we need to be higher than the, than the passing pose, which is frame 7. So that's hitting this line right here. So we want to be higher than that for frame 10. Okay. So I'll select that. And I'll move that up. Something kind of like that. Okay. Um, let's look at... I just want to check one thing here. Yeah, we should be good there. Um, I'm just going to make sure I have keyframes set for everything on frame 16. All right, so back to frame 10. So we're up a little bit higher. Um, we can look at, we'll grab the right foot, which needs to be, again, just the, the uh, kind of ball of the foot, the toes on the ground, and move that in a little bit. Uh, we can adjust both the foot roll and the foot break. So select them both, middle click and drag, so we can really get up on the toes. And that gives us a little bit more freedom to move back further. Something like that. Okay. Uh, and then we've got the left foot here is going to be out a little bit further. Uh, and then I also want to, to grab this foot roll and we're going to go actually I'm going to I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to grab the foot break and I'm going to arc it a little bit more. See a little bit more kind of style into it. Um, Maybe move this down a little bit. Something like that, I think, will work. Let's see. Yeah, we'll bring that toe, that foot roll up a little bit more. Maybe something like that, I think, will work. And then we'll let's scrub through the timeline and kind of see how that flow works. Okay, so we got a little bobble there, but we'll we'll get to that. OK. 
Okay. Uh, let's look at it from the back view and see how that's going to feel from this perspective. So we're up. And the weight shifts. I like what that's doing. Yeah, I think that's about it for this. So, same thing. We'll select all the bones. Hit S. I'll jump back into the right view for this. Uh, and then we can go to frame 22. Oops. We'll copy. Frame 22. Paste. And then we need to do the, the kind of reverse thing. So, uh, frame, or sorry, the control, we need to reverse the Y, the Z, and actually the translate X as well. Whoops, I just want to add a negative there. Okay. And then we're going to grab frame 10, we'll grab the right foot, copy, frame 22, left foot, right click and paste. And again, adjust that heel twist back to, it's going to be 13, and the translate X, we want to be, let me see what the, the translate X is doing. Yep, so we want to copy that translate X. So that foot doesn't slide out. Cool. And then go back to frame 10, copy the left foot, frame 22, select the right foot, and paste it. And again, we want negative 11.5 for the heel twist. And let's see. Yeah, we're going to copy this, translate there. It looks like we got a little bit of weirdness happening, so we need to figure out what's going on there. Frame 10, frame 22. Actually, no, that is, I mean, that's what I animated, but it doesn't mean that's right. Um, what is going on with that? Okay, I think the... Um, I think it's just these knee bones are a little bit weird, so I'm going to select them. And uh, we're just going to move them a little bit further out. So I'll go to frame one with those both both of those knee bones selected. I'm just going to move them further away. All right, and then, uh, I'll hit S to to set that keyframe. Frame. Uh, and actually, then I'm just going to copy those keyframes and then frame four, and we'll paste them there. We can also just paste the translate Z, actually. That's probably the faster way to do this. Translate Z, we'll copy that, and then we'll go to each keyframe here and paste it. There, paste, 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 paste. And frame 25. Cool. All right. So uh, let's play this back and see where we're at. Alt V. I'm also going to turn off my NURBS curves, curves, so I can see what we're working with here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The side view looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we're going to add a little bit more embellishment here very quickly, um, but you know that's a, that's a pretty solid walk cycle right there. The last bit that I want to add is a little bit of squash and stretch to kind of the body, the, the ball section. I'm animating this top bone here. I accidentally cut off some of the recording of that last little bit, but um, you know, it's the same process with the, with the up pose as it is with everything else. Um, but yeah, so let's 
let's get this some some squash and stretch going on here in the body. Uh, I'll turn on my nerves curves in this view as well, and we will just zoom out here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Um, and this is just like a bouncing ball, right? We've got vertical motion, and that's kind of what I want to replicate here. So on the down, this is where I want the squash. So I'm just going to bring this down. Um, you'll notice this bone has a, has a limit, so you can only go plus and minus 0.25. That's pretty extreme. Um, I'm going to go really subtle with it. I'll go like, whoops. We'll go, come on, there we go. Uh, negative point zero. I did point zero 0.05 in my practice. I'll go a little bit more noticeable. I'll go like negative point zero 0.08, just so it's a little bit more obvious for you on the internet. Um, but that's at the down, and then we'll go to the up, which is frame 10. And here we will go positive 0 0.08. And then do the opposite down again, negative 0 0.08. For whatever reason, there's not a keyframe here on 19, so we'll set that to 0. There we go. And then up on 22 is going to be 0 0.8. Or, nope, sorry, 0 0.08. And there we go. Make sure we got all of these configured correctly. It looks good. Again, I'm going to turn off my NURBS curve so I only see the object. I'll hit space to maximize that view. And we will hit Alt-V, and we'll see our animation. So we got a little bit of squash and stretch there. Adds a little bit of extra life. Um, here's kind of the front view. You can see it's a pretty wide gait. Right? The feet are pretty spread apart, but also the hips are pretty wide. So. It kind of makes sense for the character. Um, but you can, you know, change all of these attributes up. Maybe the feet are, you know, walks really close together. Or uh, maybe the feet don't flop as much. Or um, the, the range of motion isn't quite as wide. Maybe it's smaller steps. You know, you can change the amount of bounce in the, in the ball to give a, either a firmer or a softer, more gelatinous look. You know, all these things you have at your disposal to um, make a more convincing uh, character. Uh, you can also take this further with just how we refine the animation. So, you know, the, the bouncing ball, which actually is what I have selected here, um, the same thing that we did last semester with the bouncing ball and making it kind of more recoil at the bottom, is we can select these bottom uh, keyframes click this break tangent button and then we can have them have a little bit more of a rebound right something more like that and then you know maybe these top Maybe we want that to hang a little bit more. So I can right click and change it to weighted tangents. And then I can kind of drag them a little bit further apart. So they, that's a little bit, whoops. Yeah, so it stays stretched a little bit longer, maybe. Okay, and now let's hit play. You see it's a little bit sharper there at the bottom. Okay, just a different kind of attitude and personality. Um, you can also play with, I'm just trying to show as many different options as I can here in the last few minutes. Um, let's say like the foot and how it flops down as we kind of scrub through this. If we look at this right foot. Okay. So we've got contact up or actually, oh, I think the left foot will be a little easier to see this. Um, from where the foot is up in the air to where it's down, okay, it's a it's a pretty smooth transition. If we look at the translate, uh, we'll say the translate Z, is it goes in kind of a, a you know the, it's a pretty direct, pretty linear line. But one thing you can do 
is maybe the foot doesn't just travel straight at its target. Maybe it moves all the way over first and then kind of drops more straight down. What we can do is we can take this keyframe here, set it to a weighted tangent, and we can kind of drag this out. Oops, actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm also going to break the tangent so I can do this independent, independently. And I can drag this out. And then maybe I want to uh, kind of rotate this so it smooths that out. Right, now as we kind of scrub through this, uh, you know, that foot is out there. I probably did it a little bit too much. Oops, so we'll grab this, bring that in a little bit. Okay, so now that, that foot's going to feel like it's dropping straight down a little bit more. We'll play that back. Okay, you can kind of see how that left foot seems to hit with a little bit more force than the right foot did. Okay, we can also kind of do a similar thing as a bouncing ball with that foot. That translate Y as that hits the ground. Okay, this is that foot hitting the ground, and you can see here it's on the ground. Uh, usually you don't, as you're walking, kind of gently place your foot on the ground, you know, unless you're sneaking. Um, but if you're not sneaking somewhere, then it usually just hits the ground. So we can grab that keyframe, we can break the tangents, and then we can drag this up. And so it, it falls and kind of falls to the ground and hits. And again, we'll play that back and see how that feels. All right, so all these things that we did with bouncing balls, we can add to uh, add that to this. You can um, start working with some overlapping motion and figuring out at what point does this foot kind of go from, if we're looking at this left foot, go from this arched position to this position. And maybe what we do is with this foot, uh, you can see here in the graph editor, we have all these controls. So it's this foot roll. Um, maybe we want it to hit this bottom position a little bit sooner. So we can select this keyframe, turn it into a weighted tangent, and scale it out a little bit. Okay. So it's going to hit that position sooner. You know, and maybe we want to ease into this. So we can kind of do something like that. You play with this, and, and again, you can get caught up in this minutia quite easily. Um, but all these things can add personality and character to your animations. Um, you'll also notice, as we scrub through, just to hear a little cleanup thing. Um, actually, I don't see it. Okay, you can see it on the left foot a little bit. Um, right here, you can see where that's not touching the ground. Uh, we can look at that in in this viewport, and we can see that these values are the same, but it's not. Uh, it's not a flat line, and it shouldn't really bump up like that. So I can select this keyframe and, and set that to a flat tangent, and now that's going to stay on the ground. Okay. But everything else looks pretty good. So again, I will turn off my NURBS curves or set to playback 24 frames. Hit spacebar to maximize this view. A to frame everything up. And uh, hit all V and I think that's gonna do that for this uh, walk cycle. All right, one little addendum here um, with this walk cycle, and that is as I play it back, uh, I said initially to set these to 25, and that's because we needed to have, in order for this to be a cycle, we need the same pose at the beginning and the end, so that when it loops, you know, it's going, it, you know, it's a, it's a true loop. Uh, however, we don't want it to play back both of these frames, because then it's repeating the same thing thing and it's it'll have like a little pause in it 
can kind of see there's a hitch right there as it gets to the end. Uh, so we want to only play back to frame 24. Oops, did that again. 24. And Alt V. And now you can see that hitch isn't there, and that's a true cycle. So you need to you need to copy that frame to the end so that you you know it's returning to the same pose, but you don't want to see that pose twice. Okay, that's it.